This is a how-to video for how to create the T-Light project. Now, the T-Light project is created in Torchmate. Um, I already have the file created, so I'm going to open up that file, which will also serve as a reminder and instruction on how you guys are to open the file. So we have the educational <clears throat> excuse me, license for Torchmate. So when it saves, it automatically saves as a .edu file. However, when it tries to open, it tries to open as a .cdl file. Uh, so we need to go to file, open. We need to change the file type right here to .edu. And then you're going to navigate to your flash drive. And the flash drive I'm using is colored pink, so it is titled pink. Yours should be titled whatever your flash drive or whoever you are. It should have your name as your flash drive title. Um, so once I'm in here, I have it saved as T-Lite folder. Um, I would recommend even putting your name into that. That would make sense. So I've did about four or five different designs of this, trying to get it just right to where um, we can create this with the tools that we have in the shop uh, without uh, getting any holdups. So uh, just as, as a heads up for you guys, don't complain when you have to do things more than once. Um, sometimes you just have to do that to get it just right. So what we're looking at here, uh, this is my final uh, draft and here's my cut path. So I clicked on this. So this cut path is already created. I've already created this entire design here, um, but this is what we're looking at. So uh, when it's all said and done, you're going to have um, a little tab at the bottom here. So where it comes, drops down and comes back up a little bit and then it drops down and comes back up a little bit all the way across. All four of these have that. This is a little shelf or a ledge that is going to be used for um, this bottom to be put on there. We have a gap in between here and between these two uh, rectangles. This gap serves uh, as a lineup mark or identification mark for us to be able to bend it without having to measure uh, a bunch over at uh, the metal bender. Um, and then we have the little tab on the outside and then on the outside, and that is a spacer. Uh, once this thing comes together and it's a full square, um, that serves as a spacer. So there's not big gaps in between one side to the next side to the next side. Okay, so that is that. I'm going to go back to the normal mode, which would be the drawing mode. I'm going to go back up to this one because this is where uh, I have everything laid out. I will separate this from the previous design for you a little bit. Oh, to start with, go up to the top, show you the measurements. I'm going to get rid of that old design there. I don't need that into it. Okay, so this rectangle here, you're going to need four of these. Uh, they are two and a half by four. Um, you can lay them all out in front of you like that. I have a pumpkin design thrown into one of them already. I'm going to leave that there. Uh, the next design that I'm going to do, so I need to go to uh, clip art here. So we already have pumpkin. I'll go to leaf clip art. And I want to find something that's got a smooth or a, kind of hollow already. So it doesn't have a ton of detail. More pumpkins there if I want a different shape or size of pumpkins. Um, you know, this might be okay. That looks like a leaf without everything or everything in the middle. This one might be better though. So I'm going to go save them in jazz. I save it to the desktop or to the flash drive. Desktop for me is going to be closer. So I save it there. I'm going to minimize out of everything else. Click in to paint down here. <clears throat> Pulls paint up and because I saved this to the desktop, I can drag it onto here and go file, save as. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. JPEG. It has to be a JPEG drawing. Make sure it goes to the desktop. I'm going to type in leaf. I hit save. Minimize out of paint. I might need to come back to that, but maybe not. So this is saved as a JPEG. So I'm going to go file. Uh, acquire image, scan and trace wizard. Next, uh, browse computer and load a saved image. And I need to go to the desktop on here, navigate to the desktop, find that leaf, click next. Now I need to figure out uh, how much of this threshold do, do I want to keep. 
Um, it gives me more detail or less detail. So I'm going to go about there on this one. Each image is different. Next, apply. Okay, I'm going to click finish up here. That looks good to me. So I click finish. I got to zoom back in and always throws it in the zero coordinates. I'm going to bring it up here where I'm actually working with it. And <clears throat> some images you will have to uh, do a little bit more work with. So this one, I can see the background behind it, the grid lines going through it. Some images come in and you can't see it because this is a white space right in here. So when you click on that, you want to go to layout and ungroup is going to be an option. And then you'll want to highlight the whole image that you just brought in and make sure that it is on uh, this black layer down here. Everything needs to be the same layer. It needs to be the black layer. Um, and then you might have to, let's say this was a white image in the middle here that we just turned to black. So it's the same layer. You might have to subtract that <clears throat> or add that to the rest of your image. And if your image is doing that, you'll this will make more sense to you than if your image is not doing this and you're trying to understand what I'm talking about. So this is ready to go. I'm going to drop this over here. I could work with it a little bit more, um, but I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, yeah, I saw a couple of gaps there. I'm not sure how that's going to show up or mess it up at all. You know, that kind of looks like a tree just standing by itself. I'm going to turn it. Maybe I'll, oops, hit the undo button. Alt S. Show fill. Maybe I'll even go upside down a little bit. There we go. That looks more like leaf, I think. Go or cut or or weld. So cut it out. So right now, yeah, this is attached. So I could get I could make this um, gap in here solid, or I can leave it how it is. It's really up to the designer, which would be you in this case. Um, I think I might leave it. I can test this out to see if the tool path is going to work uh, or if I'm going to need to get rid of it. So I'll go ahead and create a tool path real quick to see if um, it's going to work for me or not. I don't think it's going to. But just walking through this, and then you guys will be able to do the same. So click OK. Show tool path only. Move that over. Come back to normal view. So it did show up, and it did work. But I think this is going to be an extremely small tool path. I don't, I'm not confident that it's going to work. So I think I'm going to go ahead and just delete the middle of it. That will allow more candlelight to come through. So I'm going to hit undo until that goes away, go back to normal. So I'll come in here, I'm gonna edit this slightly. So this, I double clicked on it, that's how I got the blue notes to show up. So I'm gonna come in here and connect the two sides. I can use a pencil tool or a, tool or a regular drawing tool. So I'm just trying to create a solid object. So I've brought it all the way around back to the beginning. I'm gonna select that and then I'm gonna hold the shift button and then I'm gonna do an or weld right there. So that made the middle disappear. So I can delete these little parts. And now I think I can click on the middle. Yes, I can. And I can delete the middle. So that's how you can edit things. Um, now going backwards all the way to before I did all that, you can move these nodes and you can reshape things however you want to. So if you, that helps you more, then do that. So I'm gonna hit undo. Delete that again. Okay, so that's a better shape. So you're gonna get at least two shapes. You can do four separate shapes, uh, but do at least two shapes and um, from the example, the Christmas example that I have below here that you'll see in a minute and the one that, which is the one that I actually cut out already. Um, that one I did find that it is best to have your design towards the top 
because then you can't see the candle. So I'm going to highlight my object. I already cut this through, so I have to highlight the object and then I can move it towards the top. I'm going to do the same with the pumpkin. And for this design, um, I'm not going to create four different objects in each side. I'm just going to create the two and then I'm going to duplicate these. So I'd actually delete those two. Uh, control B as in dog or David. Um, and then there we go. There's four different sides. Then I'm going to come on down here. I'm going to walk you through um, the different layers that this thing has. So to create this, I'm going to throw it into the corner. So I'm going to highlight all of this, move it over. Um, I'm going to put my objects in the zero coordinates because I'm going to use the zero coordinates to my advantage here uh, to get things lined up nicely. There's a couple things I want to line up nicely. So these boxes, um, I'm going to get rid of them, pretend like they're not here yet. This object, so the big rectangles, that's really what I want in the zero coordinates to start with here. And then we can start creating all these other things, but I'll go through this first, the small pieces. So I have the tab on the left side here, this tab, and it's the same for uh, several other ones here. This is 0.12 wide, and it's three and a half tall. My squares are four tall, so that gives me a quarter inch here, quarter inch difference, and a quarter inch up at the top. I don't need to need. I don't need to know the top. I'm going to click on the bottom, and I'm going to put the Y position at uh, 0.25, and it just jumps up. Okay. And I need to make sure that it's overlapped just slightly. So if I zoom all the way in here, I can see that there is a gap. I don't know if that'll come through on the video, but I'm going to hit the uh, arrows to move it over a little bit. So now it's overlapping, so I will be able to weld that together. And then I come in here. This one is also 0.12 and is uh, 3.5 uh, wide. And I'm going to put it at Y coordinates, two point or 0.25. So that way it's the same distance. This is important that this is the same distance from the bottom. Uh, this one over here, this one is 0.2. So this one is wider. This is important that this one is wider. and But it is 0.25 from the bottom. And it is uh, the same 3.5 tall. Okay. And you're going to do that exact same thing for the second side. So if you need to, hit the rewind button and get all of that the same. So it's the... Uh, 0.12, 0.12, and then this last one is the 0.2 wide. Um, your rectangle, if you haven't created that yet, probably not. That's 2.62, 2.62, and that is a square. Um, okay, so now all of those are created. We're going to go ahead and um, we need to attach these bottoms here. So these bottom pieces are 2.25 wide, and they're 0.2 thick or tall in this case. So I want to move this, all of this stuff here, now that I got it all set, I'm going to highlight all of it and I'm going to put it in the 0.2 Y coordinates. Okay, so it moves it up 0.2. And then I'm going to, actually it's not 0.2, it needs to be 0.19. So just slightly less than 0.2, so that way we get the overlapping. All of these things, I already have them in the right position, but to get the point across to you and save time in this video, I'm going to put these at the zero coordinates. Um, so they're going to slightly overlap. I have a distance, and this is just me eyeballing the distance. So this thing being uh, just a little bit less than this, um, I'm just going to try to center it just by viewing it. But the, the Y coordinates where you put in the zero, that needs to be set because that is going to bend and it needs to be all equal. However, the left and the right here is not as important. Okay, got that done for all of them. Um, I'm going to highlight everything, control D right now. So that way I have all of this work already done. And I'm going to then highlight it again. I'm going to weld it together. Now I can double check myself, click on the edge, 
bring it down. If you left anything behind, uh, then you need to make sure that you're working on the bridges. Uh, make sure that you got the bridges created. I'm gonna move this one down. I didn't lose anything. Uh, you cannot, when you're checking your bridges, you cannot highlight and then move it because you've then highlighted the bridges and they're gonna come, or the, the islands that are in the middle of this thing and they're going to come with it. So then after I move that, I'm gonna hit the back arrow command or the undo button. Um, you're gonna highlight everything, go back to machine, create the tool path. We are doing an online tool path. 100% uh, feed rate this is the most important thing about this entire process. It will not cut out over there. It'll load, it'll try to cut, but it will not uh, be successful because it will move way too fast. And then I click on the lead in, lead out tab, adjust start point, middle of longest segment, click OK. Um, now I can click on the view toolpath only button. It's up here at the top. And I'm going to highlight everything, move it to the zero coordinates. It does because it has width to it. It moves it out of the zero coordinates. Um, click on the output, click on cut now. And you can do this straight to your desktop, and then you can copy and paste it into your flash drive, or you can go straight to your flash drive. The key here is that at the end of it, you type in your name, and you're going to type cut file. So you have what this is titled is TLI holder, Carl Raving, cut file. And I'm going to hit save. It saves to the flash drive, and I'm ready to bring it over to the machine and get the thing cut out.